Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sandeep Sharma here. So the NEET SS 2023 pediatrics exam is over. It just got over a few days back. And since I am traveling continuously, I don't have access to the green screen. So I am going to do an exam analysis based upon the students feedback here. Detailed recall session will be following up in some time. But this exam analysis will give you a clue where do we stand, how the exam was compared to the previous exam, and what are the takeaways for students who will be preparing for the exam in future. So let us start. First thing, this pediatrics exam, what is the exam analysis? This is based upon the feedback of the students, right? So toughness level, moderate to tough, depending upon what cycle you do you belong to, including people who had got some good ranks in the previous NEET SS exam, those students also felt that this time it was a moderate to tough level. I would not say it is very tough, but moderate to tough means that it was not on the easier side, it was on the tougher side. It is also compounded by the fact that many options were very close to each other. Second point is that there were less clinical scenarios than NEET SS 2022. In the previous NEET SS 2022, there were a more number of the clinical scenarios. The number of exact clinical scenarios of the long lengthy cases was slightly less this time. Yes, there were cases and the number of cases was more than INISS, but the overall number of clinical scenarios was slightly fewer compared to the previous exam. The questions of the standard of questions was higher compared to the INISS general part. You know that INISS, there is a speciality part, so we cannot really compare apples with oranges, but we'll be comparing the general part of INISS with the general part of, uh, with the NEET SS part and NEET SS in general by people who have given both the exam they found it to be on the higher side. Then many ambiguous questions were there and options were there. At least five to seven questions were there in which different answer is given in Nelson, different answer is given in Cloverty. Similarly, different answer given in Nelson, different answer given in Illingworth. Such ambiguous questions, we are not really sure what examiner is going to ask and what exactly reference they are going to use in the exam. And then there were certain questions, one or two questions in which there was nothing really to choose between the options, right? Yes, there were five to seven ambiguous questions and keeping fingers crossed, I think these questions are going to make a difference in the eventual score. Now, there were two CAH questions which were solvable. One of them was tougher, but if you have gone through it from Nelson, you should have been able to solve both of them. There were questions from expected topics like dyslexia, Tourette syndrome and autistic spectrum disorder. Hearing assessment question was there. Hearing assessment, I've been saying since so long, even in my live sessions and on my social media, I've been saying to people who ask me, be thorough with hearing assessment. Be thorough with hearing assessment. And INISS also, there is every year, there is one or two questions from hearing assessment. This time also, there were questions on hearing assessment. And as promised, uh, some additional videos on related to hearing assessment, I've already done for the prep ladder, new elite plan, which is there. You should see it being uploaded very shortly. Then JDM, GIA, milestones, there were expected questions. These are easy areas. Expected questions were asked. Three to four questions were case scenarios. There was one poisoning case related to snake venom poisoning. And there was another ABG question. In fact, there was one case ABG and one option related ABG question related to pediatric critical care. And one more critical care question was there. Then less little to no biostatistics from what I've heard. And few drugs were asked compared to the older papers. Yes, there were drugs. But it was something more of a clinical approach. Like they asked, Nusi Nursal, what is the way you are going to give? Now, Nelson very clearly mentions Nusi Nursal needs to be given intrathecally. In my video also, I have talked about it. And I've written with a different colored pen also, if you remember. So, Nusi Nursal. So, if you are thorough with the clinical part, the treatment part of the major topics, you would have been able to solve most of the drug-related questions. Now, coming to the third thing, Nelson continues to be the boss. It constituted almost 75 to 80% of all MCQs. So nothing, no surprises here. We know exam comes from Nelson. Nelson is a tough book. You need to read it thoroughly and you need to break it down. And that is why most of the videos which you see on Prepladder SS, I have created based upon Nelson. I've tried to simplify them. So whether you're following Prepladder or not, Nelson is your go-to book if you're targeting any NEET SS exam and the future NEET SS exam. This time, there were atypical, less read things also asked. There were questions on strabismus. Now, nobody reads strabismus from Nelson, but a stat question was taken from there. Capnography, nobody reads capnography in detail, but statement this question on capnography was given. There is a question related to Williams syndrome, where they had given a pressure curve. Now, nobody reads pressure curves when they read Park's 
or Nelson, Nelson doesn't have any pressure graphs being given, but nobody reads them in details. The question was simpler, but the facts which were mentioned there were creating doubts in the minds. So some atypical things. See, every exam will have 10% atypical things. So this is something we cannot really, you know, complain about. And then general pediatrics was easier compared to the previous need assess. General pediatrics was also more compared to the previous year. Having said that, the typical Koshorkar Marasmus things are less asked in ETSS. That is something we already know. And questions on these were the overall weightage of general pediatrics was more in 2023 compared to 2022. So, as general pediatrics is out, like many people did the mistake, I got one message also. Sir, believing with the previous year pattern, I did not read general pediatrics much. See, examiners never say we are going to put this much question from this area. So you need to read every coverage, every important system of pediatrics, the maximum you can. Pediatric neuro, pediatric GI, neonatology, and pediatric nephro had good weightage. This is a trend we have seen over the years. Neuro, nephro, GI, neonatology, lot of questions are asked. And I would say these four areas are the rank deciders. Doesn't mean that other topics are less important, but these are kind of rank deciders if you are targeting the exam. So be thorough and your coverage should be very good in these areas. If you see the our, uh, videos also, a lot of pediatric neuro videos are there, but still there will be some areas, not everything can be covered in video or in notes. You are supposed to read those lesser important topics also, because end of the day, even if it is one paragraph page topic, all it takes is one MCQ to be framed from it and it becomes hugely important. Now, pediatric oncology, fortunately, was very easy. Very easy. I would say, now all the questions I saw except one, they were repeats or expected or simple cases. So, if someone is good in pediatric oncology, you have done Nelson and reasonable levels of Lenzowski, you would have done great, right? And horizontal spread of questions. This is something you need to understand. In INISS, you have a vertical spread of questions. Vertical means they go into the details of a particular speciality, whatever speciality you are targeting. In need assess, there is a horizontal spread. There is a question being asked from every single system you can think of in case of children. And except biostatistics, every single system had questions from it. So you cannot be strong in one area and weak in another. You need to have a more balanced preparation if you're targeting need assess. And what is the advice for future aspirants? First of all, as I said, Nelson continues to be the boss. So follow the boss. Who is the boss? Nelson is the boss. Read it thoroughly. Other textbooks, add on, but not a replacement for Nelson. Do not skip any system, as I said, even minor ones. If you have time, sometimes you are not in the mood of reading, you are targeting the future exam, start reading dermatological disorders from Nelson. Just a quick review, not the everything, but neonatal dermatological disorders, vesicobullous disorders in case of children, or fungal infections in children. So cover everything. It is not possible to cover almost everything, but try to cover the maximum you can and no system should be untouched if you are reading a particular system. Pediatric neuro, genetics, critical care, neonatology need detailed reading. Only Nelson is not going to be enough. You need to add additional sources to them. Consider additional resources for pediatric nephrology. The book by the ever uh, respectable esteemed Bagasar that book which you read, not the protocol of the book, but the proper book, you need to add selected parts of that, AKI, CKD, and the latest edition from that. Tubular disorders, peritoneal dialysis, just add those points and you will find you, your success rate in difficult questions in nephrology will increase. And clinical scenarios, still, they make up between 25 to 40% of the paper and one-liners are like all or none. You either know the answer or you don't know the answer. And facts cannot be always remembered. But clinical scenarios, even if this time it was less, last time it was 50 to 60% clinical scenario, this time between 25 to 40. Based upon, depending upon who I talked to, it was about 25 to 40% of the paper. I still believe clinical scenarios make the difference. You might have been able to answer them rightly. Somebody who's reading superficially, for that person, it will be a difficult thing. So read clinically, read what you'd see in the wards, and do not neglect your primary resources, your Nelson, videos, notes, cue banks, they do help. But end of the day, there is no replacement for understanding and reading the core pediatrics, right? So don't take too many shortcuts. If you have to take any shortcuts, we have created shortcuts for you, right? So that is the shortcut you can take, but hard work always pays, Nelson reading always pays. Recall session, it's going to be tough, I know, and it is going to be time consuming, but I'll try. If not in one book, at least in one or two parts, I will be putting up shortly.
So do share the feedback and do let me know what is your take on this. And we'll be getting back again and try to put up a live session this time so we can interact a bit more better. Thank you so much and all the best.